Good morning, good morning. We welcome you to CFNBC this morning. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. So glad to see you in the house today. We welcome you, the, those that are in gathered and those that are on the live stream. So we are not gonna uh, hold the services up any longer. We welcome you to this humble sanctuary. So let's just have a joyous and wonderful time in the Lord today. Now let's join in with the praise team, amen? Amen. Oh, 
Amen, amen. We come to praise, we come to worship. And why do we come to praise and worship? Because he has done marvelous things in our lives. Marvelous things. He woke us up today. He started us out on our way today. He gave us the breath of life today. He's done marvelous things today. Can we celebrate the marvelous things that God has done for us just today? Not yesterday, but for right now. Marvelous things. in the spirit this morning and truly we can get excited about the marvelous things God has done for us in our lives when we just look back over where he's brought us from what he's taken us through and a future that he has for us we can say he's done marvelous things marvelous things for us praise ye the Lord amen Amen. We come to worship today. We come to celebrate God today. And if you would stand with me, we will read scripture coming from Psalms 91. Marvelous things. Marvelous. Psalms 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snares of the fowl and from the north and pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shall not be afraid for the terror by night nor of the arrows that flyeth by day nor of the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth in noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but, be, but it shall not come nigh thee. Amen? Amen? Our mission statement, come on first, Missionary Baptist Church is Bible-centered and family-oriented, existing to exalt the Savior, evangelizing, equipping, and encouraging people to advance the cause of Christ in the Como community and abroad until his return. Amen. You may be seated. Are we waiting for his return? I'm waiting because he has done marvelous things. Yeah. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. And the thing about God and his marvelous things that he's doing, he will continue to bless, encourage, and enrich us when we pray to him for what we're going through. The list is long, but we know that God is well able today. We're asking that in your prayer time that you will cover these people that stand in need of prayer. Sister Audrey Baker in Harris downtown, Joe Polk, uh, member of Reverend Grimm's family, stage four cancer, Cindy Adams, who will be having surgery this Wednesday. This Wednesday. Larry Wheatfield, the father of Reverend Grimm. Ernestine Scott, who's burying a nephew in Louisiana Friday. Um, Sister Del Morale, Loretta Hardeman, Greg Mack, Gloria Shepherd, Tammy Yarbrough, who's in the house today. Flodell Hudson, Bobby Bateman, Carolyn Lacey, Lisa Rose, Sue Ellen Simon, and Sandra Medford. Eugene Burton, Onyx Bryce, 
Yolanda Finley, Michael Holmes, Yvette and Otis Hill, Otis is in the Hughley Hospital, Terry Attaway, Deacon Joshua Cox, Emma Davis, Sherry Polk, Sister Billy Caldwell, Sister Betty Jones, Artist Parrish, and our own Sister Connie Russell, and Larry Gibson. We all stand in need of prayer. When we go to the Father for our concerns, for our inadequacies, for whatever is troubling us and bothering us, when we humble ourselves for the, before the Almighty God, praying earnestly to hear a word from Him, God will speak to us. And that's all we have to do is humble ourselves today and allow the Word of God to speak to this thy people today as we're standing to our feet for our altar call. God is well able to do what man cannot do. Father God, we come in the manner in which we've been taught. We bow our heads, bowed heads and humble hearts, calling on thy most holy name. Incline thy ear to hear, Lord, for we stand in need of so many things. But we know that you are well able to fill all our needs, Lord. And Father God, we know that you will give us the things that we need. And Father God, when we delight ourselves in your word, you will give us the desires of your heart. For all that, we say thank you, Lord. We thank you for yesterday, Lord. We thank you for this morning's early rising. We thank you for the activities of our limbs. We thank you for our mind that's straight. We thank you for a voice that's loud. We thank you for ears to hear. We thank you for the nose to smell. We thank you for all the senses that you've given us, Lord. And Father God, you've given us a greater sense to get to the house of the Lord today, that we may worship and praise you today for all the things that you've done for us in our lives, Lord. You've taken us through sickness, Lord. You're taking us, taking us through financial situations, Lord. You've taken us through relationship situations, Lord. And all the time you've been right there with us, Lord. And for that, we say thank you, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to see the goodness in people, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to have a spirit of forgiveness, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to follow out our darling son, Jesus, Lord. Father God, we're so blessed today to have you as our God, Lord. And Father, we're blessed for you to have us as your servants, Lord. So Father God, we ask right now, Lord, that you would cover the pastor, Lord. Lord. Father God, we hope that he's had an enjoyable vacation, Lord, that he's had the time to rest and just to enjoy Sister Dana, Lord. Father God, we thank you for his teaching. We thank you for his preaching. We thank you for his lifestyle that leads guys and directs us to you, Lord. So, Father God, we ask that you just give him a spirit of surrender and rest right now, Lord, that when he comes back, he will be more vigorous, more vitality, and he will preach an uncompromising God to this thy people, Lord. Father God, we pray right now for the one that will stand in his stead today, Lord. Lure him into the deep treasures of their most holy word, Lord. Allow him to spring forth with a word on high for the people, Lord. Father God, not only that, we pray for all the parishioners that are here, Lord, for all the parishioners that are online right now, Lord. Father God, you know their needs, Lord. Now, Father, give them what they need right now, Lord. Father God, we pray right now and we ask for the forgiveness of sin, Lord. Cover us with thy grace and mercy, Lord. Give us the strength and the understanding that you are God and you are a forgiving God. Now, Father God, we ask that you write the vision, Lord. Make it plain. And we know that it shall not lie, Lord. And Father God, we're waiting on your return, Lord. Now, Father God, we ask that you bless the furtherance of this service, Lord. Right now, Lord, give us the strength to go forward, Lord. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 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 This is a part of the service where we all can be participants. And you know, that's what I heard when I was a young man growing up. When I was six and seven years old, they said, now, this is a part of the service that you can be a participant in. It's offering time, amen? And we all can be participants in the offering. If we just give back what God has given to us, he will bless. It says, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And we received the most blessed blessing that we could because God sent his only begotten son to hang on a cross for our sins that we may have a right to the tree of eternal life. 
Father God, we thank you right now, Lord. We ask that you touch the hearts of those that will give today, Lord. Father God, we ask that you strengthen the faith of those that have the desire to give, but have it not to give. We know that you are a God that has everything, and the only thing that you need from us is praise and worship. So, Father God, we ask right now, if you don't have a financial offering, that you give an offering of praise and worship today, that some man, woman, boy, or girl may see the praise and the Christ in them, that they may come running and asking, what must I do to inherit eternal life? These blessings and many more we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. announcements before we move into the further rest of the service mail course rehearsal this Tuesday at 7 p.m. all men we're asking that you come out and uh, participate in the mail course rehearsal once upon a time I thought I could sing but everybody kept telling me that I can't so I, I don't sing but there are some great voices in the men of this house so those of you men that have great voices, come and be a participant, that you can be a blessing to the congregation because I know I've been sitting around some brothers that can sing, will sing, and today we're asking you to come out on Tuesday so you shall sing on that Sunday that the men are up. Amen? Amen. Galilee Griggs um, Memorial District, the 94th annual session will be held September 25th through the 27th at Community Baptist Church, 1125, East Jessamine, moderator R.J. McGinty, the host pastor. So for all of those that are able to participate in that, we're asking that you support 
uh, the Galilee Griggs District Association. This is an association that I grew up in. It's a marvelous association that is for the betterment of all churches in that uh, district. So we want to be participants that we, when we can, because if we're not participants in these things, then these things go away. And if you just take a minute uh, and think about the elder members that you set at their feet and glean from their knowledge and their understanding about Christ and the functioning of the church, you will see that we had some marvelous, there's that word again, marvelous, people that attended the Galilee Griggs, that participated in the Galilee Griggs, that believed in the Galilee Griggs, and it behooves me that we're not participants now um, because it's those foundational things that help grow the churches. It's where churches come, to come together to build up smaller churches that everybody can receive a word from God. So it's a good, pro it's a good organization. And uh, the last time I attended, I saw a lot of elder Christians and it's time for my age and those that are younger to be participants of this Galilee Griggs. Uh, I'm not the pastor. I'm just a simple nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody that can save anybody. That's all I am. I'm just sharing a word of encouragement that we can continue to have this organization grow and be vibrant again because we are young, we are youthful, and we have ideas, and all we need to do is come together with those that have been on the battlefield for a long time to ensure them that we still yet have warriors that will be pushing the Christian banner, telling this wicked world that Jesus still lives and he's still yet saving people. Just a nobody trying to tell somebody about someone that can save anybody. Amen? Um, we have a special announcement. Uh, Minister Burton, if you would come. Amen. Amen, amen. All praises be to our most high God, Lord and Savior. Come on, first Missionary Baptist Church. Missionary Baptist Church. We are a church of missions, equipped and evangelizing. Not only do we partake in foreign missions, and we know we have the effort going with Haiti now, but we have what we call local missions here that we take part in. God requires of us our time, our talent, and our treasure. As we give to those foreign entities, we have locally here where we just simply ask to serve just a few hours, a few hours maybe in a week or even once a month. We've been blessed to take part in Angel Tree, Good News Club, Prison Ministry, the Mobile Pantry, and I could go on and on, opening doors for women in need. But one of our best kept secrets happened to be Academy Four, where it requires only a couple of hours once a month on a Friday. And we happen to be blessed to give back or be mentors right here in this community at Leadership Academy at Como Elementary. So I'm here today on behalf of Academy 4. We've got also uh, our, where's Cameron? Come on down, Cameron, and let right, them see Cameron. Left. Cameron started out just in uh, Como, there you are, you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hiding in plain clothes. Started out just as a mentor and uh, working as a coordinator. But Cameron now happens to be the market and media specialist for Academy 4. He has a real and full-time job. And he works under the auspices, and we are delighted to have in our midst the executive director of Fort Worth's Academy 4, Mr. John Shear, and he's going to come and share with us today. Hear ye, Mr. Shear, if you would. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Well, let me say, um, I, you've gone out of your way to make me feel welcome here this morning, and I am so thankful for that, and it's such a joy to worship with you this morning. I'm just an old guy from West Texas, grew up in Lubbock, went to Texas Tech, but this is too much. Dressing in Texas Tech red and black for me? Wow. What a joy. Thank you. No, in all seriousness, I uh, want you to know um, you guys are in our prayers regularly. 
uh, as one of our partner churches, uh, and you have been in our prayers especially this summer uh, with the tragedy that's happened in this community. Um, and it's just such a joy to be able to partner with you. Uh, this is our 12th year to do the program. We started at Daggett Elementary, and it was really some, uh, some folks that had a heart to, to love on kids, uh, but find an on-ramp for busy people to be able to do this uh, so that um, we just honestly didn't have an excuse uh, because it started with a guy whose pastor said, hey, you're generous with your resources, but get your hands dirty. And he tried some things and every week kind of commitments and he just failed. And of course, successful people, a lot of times when they, they hit a challenge and they can't do something, they find a solution. And that's what Academy 4 was. It was a solution to a problem of how do busy people show up in their community and make a real impact? And that's what we've been doing now for 12 years. We'll be on 46 schools this year with the help of the Lord. Yes, yeah, amen. We'll serve more than 4,000, well, right, on, right, excuse me, right under 4,000 fourth graders. We'll need more than 4,000 mentors to do that. Um, and we also have a fifth grade program called Leaders 5 where those, those fourth graders who were poured into turn, turn around and mentor a first grader. And we'll have... Uh, about 6,000 first and fifth graders in the program this year. I'm not a great, great at math. They didn't teach that too well at Tech, but um, that's about 10,000 kids that we're going to serve this year, which is just unbelievable. But we're nothing but a tool, Academy 4. Uh, we are a tool for the local church to show up and do that work, to love on kids in their community. Um, and we want to make that the best tool we can, and with people like like. Cameron and so many others on our staff, uh, we do our best to try to make this easy, make it simple for you, uh, because you can make a big impact, as, as Ella said, once a month, 90 minutes, anybody can do it. Uh, we show up and we talk about leadership, but we're really there for relationship. And there's two things that make Academy 4 special. One is that every student knows there's going to be somebody there for them, so every kid's included. I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, you know, some, some students would, would, you know, go to what we used to call resource class, and, and just, they felt less than, they felt cut off from the herd. But every kid in Academy 4 feels special. They don't feel like they're cut off for anything. They feel like they're getting to do something, uh, and that's a big thing. But beyond that, um, we all come and we mentor together. So there's this sense of community on those Friday afternoons when we come together. Kim, tell them, there's more joy, more love, more hope, more just sense of togetherness and community than is, is there throughout the rest of the week or throughout the rest of the month. So your presence lifts the spirits of those kids, but moreover, when the body of Christ is in that school, the Holy Spirit is there, active and alive and working in you, through you, in powerful ways. And so I want to tell you quick, two quick stories, if, if I have time. One is about a student named Macy and her mentor, Jesse. They had a good year, year before last, uh, together, so much so that Jesse's like, hey, I'm going to mentor again, and she did. She signed up to mentor last year, but was kind of, I don't know what impact I really had on Macy until she discovered um, over the summer something traumatic happened in Macy's world. Doesn't, didn't know what, I don't know what it was either, uh, not my business, but she came back to school and she wasn't the same child. Uh, she didn't want to speak to anybody, wouldn't talk to teachers, wouldn't talk to other students, wouldn't talk to counselors or administrators, and just put her, her jacket over her head at her desk because she just didn't even want to be seen. And then finally, one day, one of the counselors was just trying to pull her out a little bit and just said, hey, you won't talk to me, you won't talk to anybody else. Who will you talk to? First words that child said all year, she said, I talked to Jesse, my Academy Four mentor. Oh. And so they started, at, they asked Jesse to come back and just have lunch with her last year as a fifth grader and just connect with her. And I'd love to tell you that everything's fixed in her world. You know better than that. It's not. It's going to take a long time. But in her darkest hour, the Lord brought her Jesse in advance. Before that hour ever got there, he <laughs> brought her Jesse knowing that that's a person she could trust, she could depend on, and that would love her well. Cam told me a little something about, about y'all. I don't know why you said this to me, but it stuck with me. He just said, hey, about 70% of the folks that worship here come in from outside the community. They have roots here, but you come in from somewhere else. I was like, okay. <laughs> but then God just started kind of 
he wouldn't let that leave my head. I don't know why. He told me this Thursday or Friday of last week. And here's what is on my heart to just share with you. That's amazing. One, that um, this place, this community is so special to you that even though you may not be living here right now, you, you come back in because this place means something to you. That is special. I want to share something that will make it, I think, even a little bit more special. Come once a month on a Friday. I know you're here for other things too, but come one more time, once a month on a Friday, and spend time with these fourth graders. Our kids had one of our students say to us, you know, you know what my favorite part of Academy 4 is? And we do fun things. There's two 90-minute segments. We do spark clubs, and it's all kind of enrichment clubs. We have art. We have, we have uh, golf. We have soccer. We have cooking. All these wonderful things happening. And then we have that one-on-one -on -one mentoring time. And she said, you know what my favorite thing about Academy 4 is? It's the eye contact that my mentor gives me. Our kids are just hungry and thirsty for relationship, and that's what we do. We're very intentional about it. You'll see everything about the program is there for you to build a positive relationship with a student because our students, Macy needed that. Macy needed that in her hardest times. But let me tell you, and this is where I'll end. When we go do a program like this, and I invite adults to do it, um, I'm asking you to give of yourself, and I'm asking you to put yourself out there and to give of your time. But what I want you to hear, and you know this, I'm just reminding you, what I want you to hear is you're going to be blessed in ways you can't even dream or imagine. And let me tell you about Richard real quick, and, and I'll land the plane here. Richard, first year to mentor last year, and uh, having a great year with his student, Caden. And um, anyway, middle, middle of the year, he has to come to his site coordinator and say, hey, I've been diagnosed with cancer, and uh, I'm going to have to have treatments, but I've arranged it where all my treatments are, are not on Academy for Friday, so I'll, I'll be there every time. <laughs> and the side coordinator was just like, Richard, no, man, we have subs. We will, we will have somebody stand in for you. You take care of yourself. Go do what you need to do. And he said, no. He said, I don't know what Caden would do without me. And the site coordinator who told me that story, I said, hey, you know what Richard was really saying, don't you? And she's like, oh, yeah. He said, Richard was saying, I don't know what I'd do without Caden. And don't miss that. Y'all, these kids in this community, in that school, LA Como Leadership Academy at Como, we call it LA Como, they are so precious. They have so much to give, so much to offer. They will surprise you. They will bless you in ways that you didn't even know you needed. So please come and be a part. Cam and I will be in, in the back after the service, and we would love for you to join us uh, in, in this really great opportunity to just love on your community. Thank you so much, John. Listen, I want you to know leading the pack for Academy 4 in those schools on those Fridays is our first lady. She was going to give a plug today or, or last week uh, regarding Academy 4 and wasn't here. But we've had the Academy 4 table out front for about four or five weeks, yeah. Uh, and there's only one signature on that side up. Again, I've been mentoring for four years in Academy 4. I've been doing probably 15 with Good News Club and some of the other uh, in school activities, but you would not know what a blessing it is. You don't have to be an educator. You don't have to be a minister. You have to be a listener. All right. You just sit and listen. You have a printed program that you follow, but if it gets off track so that you can bless that child, you have that opportunity. So I want to encourage you also to consider doing it. We know uh, who else is mentored. I know that Sylvia Ingram, Randall, uh, Cheryl, so many others. Yes. Uh, have done this, and we want all of you to consider being a part of it just once a month. Come at about 1245, you're out of there before 3 o'clock. Consider doing that to be a blessing. Come on, we're in it to win it all the time, right? Right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Minister Burden and John and Cameron. God has a place for all of us, and he's simply asking Will you receive me? Will you follow me? Vacation Bible School. Will you surrender? Will you submit? Will you worship? And will you follow? God is asking that question to all of us. Nobody's perfect. We've all done things that we've asked the Lord to forgive us of. Now the Lord is asking us to be a participant to strengthen the youth of today. The world has a call on the children in our world. God has a call also. 
but he's calling his workers to go into the field and to work. Amen? Amen, amen. Thank you. Thank you, Academy 4, for that uh, announcement. Are there any other visitors that would like to be acknowledged today? There's a person from Cali. She's part family. I just want everybody to... I just want her to stand so we can see her because we hadn't seen her in a long time. Annette? She's, uh, she's, she was coming every year until COVID hit. We're glad to have you back for another year. This is uh, Ella's and Bryn's family member and um, Freddie and all of that Hill clan. We're so happy to see you again this year. We're blessed by your presence here, as always. Also, we're blessed by everyone's presence here today. Amen? And believe it or not, believe it or not, you have a purpose in your life to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. You know why you have a purpose in life to serve Christ? Because he's done marvelous things. <laughs> Praise ye the Lord. Amen? Amen. We thank you for those um, visitors and those announcements. Um, so um, it's that appointed time in the service uh, that we've come to hear. I, uh, this young man is a father. He's a husband. He's a brother. He's a provider. He's a sustainer. He's a lover of God. He's preached to us before. And he's well equipped to deliver a word of God. You know why he's well equipped? Because God called him to preach an uncompromising gospel. God called him to stand behind the sacred desk. God called him to preach in season and out of season, whether he's received or not. And he's put that in his heart to do the will of God. So I'm going to ask that everyone in the house, and if you're online, point at your television, computer, or whatever device you're looking on with. We're going to point to Reverend Kevin Davis, and we're going to say it just like this. Reverend Davis, Davis, preach a word today. Word. The, next song, uh, the next voice you'll hear after the song of preparation will be that and none other than our own Reverend Kevin Davis Sr. Amen. He's done marvelous.
Come on, hallelujah. Put your hands together. Come on, come on. He deserves the praise. He deserves the honor. Come on, just for a minute. Bless him. Praise him. Worship him. Love on him. Do you feel safe? Come on, has he brought you through something? Has he watched over you? Has he protected you? Has he kept you? Come on, come on. Your Lord, he deserves it. Not the church, not the pastor, but I'm safe in his arms. I'm safe. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm safe. Come on, in his arms. I'm safe. He shall hide me. God and our Father, how we thank you afresh for another day for keeping us safe another day. Nobody but you from week to week. You and you alone made it possible for us to make it to the house of prayer one more time. safe in your arms so we lift our voices give everything within us we say thank you for loving us for being Lord for being God all by yourself thank you for this great church this great body of believers thank you for your Holy Spirit your Son Christ Jesus and this great Holy Word that you have before us so we now come Father lift your word Father let it go forth in a special unique way bless equip and encourage your people this day let them lay hold to a nugget, God, that will bless them and protect them and keep them, Father, in these last and evil days. We love you. We adore you. We honor you. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray and give thanks. And every blood bought born, born again believer says amen and thank God. Thank you, Sister Debbie. Thank you, Sister Nicole. Praise team. Hallelujah. God bless y'all. If you have your Bibles and if you hadn't moved it since last Sunday, just go a few chapters forward, Psalm number 27, Psalm number 27, familiar passage, a little practical word of encouragement, I want to just drop in your spirit to help you, just say we are living in some dark times, but he will keep you safe in his arms, Psalm 27, I'm going to look at verses 1 through 6, and then from there I'll drop down and read 11 through 14. Psalm 27. If you have it, say amen. Amen. Someone, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, 
that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me. They just said it, they just sung it. He shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall mine head be lifted above mine enemies round about me. Therefore, I will offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Verse 11, teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Verse 14, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah for the word. This is a powerful text in so many ways. It's bookended by two powerful texts. Uh, verses, verse 1, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? Oh, the Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? And then verse 14, wait on the Lord. I want to preach today from this topic and with this thought in our minds as a guide, let the Lord be Lord. All right. Come on here. Let the Lord be Lord. Let the Lord be Lord. Is there anyone in here today who, who has a car sitting in your driveway and when the time comes for you to go somewhere, you walk outside your house, you open the door to your car, you put the car in neutral, and then you get behind the car and start pushing the car all the way to your desired destination. Is there anybody who would do that? No? Because you know what the car is able to do for you. So you let the car be the car and you drive the car to your destination. You with me? Is there anybody in here today living in a house filled with all the modern fixtures, amenities, and technology that is common in a house today, and yet you choose to go outside, dig a well in your backyard, attach a bucket, rope, and pulley over the well, and then you start drawing the water that you need from down in the well. Is there anybody here who would do that? No. You let the house be the house. Because you know all you have to do is turn on the faucet or go to your refrigerator when you are thirsty or in need of some water. I hope you get me. Let's see if this one gets you. Is there anybody here today who had a serious pain and sickness in your body? And you went to the emergency room and from there you went through the process of checking in, being weighed, being triaged. And, and then finally a nurse took you back to your private room and then as soon as the ER doctor comes in and says to you, tell me what's going on, where are you hurting? And you say to the doctor, I got this. I can handle this all by myself. And then you start to stitch and operate and prescribe prescriptions for yourself. Is there anybody here who would do that? <laughs> no. Because you understand that the doctor has the know-how and the hands to heal you and help you with the pain that you are in. Well, 
if you understand what your car is and you understand what your house is and if you understand who your doctor is then surely you ought to know who your Lord is. Come on. And if you know who the Lord is, then it's time for you to learn how to let go and let God and let the Lord be Lord. Let the Lord be Lord. The Lord, he will protect you and he will keep you. The Lord will fight your battles if you trust him at all times and let the Lord be Lord. And that's the message that the Lord wants to teach us today through this 27 number of Psalm. No matter what comes against you, no matter what it looks like, the Lord is on your side. But you see, when David, when he wrote this 27 number of Psalm, it was because he had learned that the Lord was on his side. After he had an encounter with his enemies, and a giant named Goliath, and he got the victory over that giant, David learned that he, had, he didn't have to be fearful. And David began to grow and understand that all he had to do in this life was let the Lord be Lord. And so now as we look at this text, look at the text, one of the things that you'll see in these 14 verses is that David uses the word Lord 13 times. 13 times, 14 verses, and in almost all the verses, he uses the word Lord. 13 times he uses the word Lord. Coincidence? I don't think so. I believe that was the intention on David's part because I also believe that just like David, our Father in heaven wants us to understand how to let the Lord be Lord. And so as I build my argument, the first thing I want you to know is that the Lord is my all and all. That's the number one thing. The first thing, the Lord is my all and all. And if you're not a babe in Christ, then you don't have to go any further than those first three words in the text to know that the Lord is my all in all. Because it says, the Lord is. Ooh, y'all got dead right there. Uh, 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 I got some work to do. Let me say it again. The Lord is. Come on, the Lord is. All right, the Lord is. Come on, if the truth be told, everything I say about this text should start with the Lord is. My title should be the Lord is. Yeah, my first point should be the Lord is. And my second point should be the Lord is. My third point should be the Lord is. My clothes should be the Lord is. Because when it's all said and done, the Lord is. Come on now, we're talking about an infinite God. Come on here. If I had 10,000 tongues, I couldn't say enough about the Lord is. The Lord is merciful. The Lord is mighty. The Lord is great. The Lord is good. The Lord is power. The Lord is peace. The Lord is love. The Lord is life. The Lord is holy. The Lord is most high. The Lord is omnipotent. The Lord is omniscient. The Lord is omnipresent. It is infinite. You can say the Lord is all day long, and you will never run out of things to say about the Lord is. So what is the Lord to you? The Lord is. It's just like God saying to Moses before the children of Israel, I am that I am. Why did he say that and why do we say this today? Because the only way you can describe he who cannot be fully under described is by saying, I am that I am or the Lord is. You fill in the blank. The Lord is, you fill in the blank. And so David starts us off right there in verse 1 by saying, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? So I thank God for his saving grace because without him I would still be lost in my sins on my way to a burning hell. And I now know that the Lord is my salvation. But not only that, do we thank him for his salvation, we need to thank him for his light. Because you don't have to be a prophet, you don't have to be a preacher, you don't even have to be spiritually a spiritually deep person 
to know that evil and darkness is abounding in the world today. Yeah, all you got to do is just turn on your TV and almost every show that you watch is polluted with sin and darkness in some kind of way. Turn on CNN and it's just a matter of minutes before you see how darkness has consumed our politics and our American government. But then not just that, go to your job and begin to interact with the people on your job. You'll hear the conversations and the actions of the people on your job will reveal just how many people are still blinded and living in darkness. And it's that same darkness that not only does it want to dim your light, but ultimately it wants to destroy the light that's in you. That's why you have to remember that the Lord is my light and we have to let the Lord be Lord and allow his light to shine through us at all times. Yeah, let me ask you a question. Does anybody know what happens when light is turned on in a dark room? Anybody know? Oh, it's fine. We can just talk. Come on. Anybody know? All right. Uh, darkness goes away. Right. So, let me say it again. Does anybody know what happens when a light is turned on in a dark room? Darkness goes away. All right? Y'all heard me, but I know y'all didn't get it, so let me say it this way, just in case. Do we really understand that, we, that when we encounter darkness and the light inside of us is on then darkness has to go away. Yeah, that, that's what I'm talking about right there. If the light is on in you and you enter a dark place, conversations, job, people, wherever it is, darkness has to go away. All right, because light and darkness, they cannot exist in the same space at the same time. So if your light is on, then darkness is gone. But if your light is off, then darkness dominates and destroys everything around. So I brought a little, little, little something with me to help me out today, y'all. I ain't real big on illustrations, but y'all roll with your boy for just a minute. All right, got me a little flashlight, you know. So here we go, here we go. I know the light's on, but you can still see the light. If you can't, I'll put it in your eyes. Take my word for it. The light is shining. Ain't nothing dark going on right here, right? Wherever I shine this light, darkness has to go, right? But I want to tell you the second thing about your light. See this little light here? Just got a little brighter. The brighter your light, the further darkness has to go away from you. I ain't no real great preacher, but I'm preaching right now. The greater your light, the greater the distance that darkness has to get away. If you want the haters on your job to back up, let your light shine, baby. You ain't got to fight, you ain't got to cuss, you ain't got to argue. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine and watch. They either going to think you're a fool and run, or the Jesus in you is going to make them back up and respect the light in you. Let your light so shine. So the question is, are you allowing your light to shine in those dark places on your job? Are you allowing your light to shine in the presence of those people who are lost in darkness? Let your light shine. If you let your light shine before men, the Lord will be with you. The Lord will be on your side because the Lord, he is your ally. And that's the next thing I want, want you to see in this text. The Lord is my ally. Beginning right there in verse 2, David starts to tell us why we need the Lord as an ally. Verse 2 says, when the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came up to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Stop right there. That one verse has a lot to chew on right there. When the wicked, when the wicked... Even my enemies and my foes. Now, just in case you didn't know, there is a difference between your enemy and your foes. Did you know that? Uh, you're real smart then. Now, now listen, both of them, they are wicked. They, they, they do have that in common. Both are wicked and both are wrong. But they have two totally different motives for rising up against you. So let me just show you some differences between your enemy and your foe because the battle and the attacks are different. 
with your foe, they don't like what you stand for. They don't like your beliefs, your, your position. They have a specific issue with you, i.e. your Christian faith. Their wrongs with you are motivated by their misguided morals. With your foes, it's business and it's part-time. All right? But on the other hand, your enemy is a different type of wicked. With your enemy, it's not about your beliefs. It's not about your position. It's not about the fact that you did or did not do something to them. It's not about any of those things. With your enemy, it's just about you. Yeah. Come on, that's good news. Now, they don't like you. Come on. They hate you, the person. I didn't want to sing y'all out, but I owe my life, and I heard too many women say, ooh, I just don't like her. Why? I don't know. I just don't like her. Yeah, they just don't like you. And I'm sorry, if that was you, you got a little wicked in you, all right? They don't like you, and with them, it's not business, it's personal, <laughs> and it's full time. They don't never stop hating on you. And the only way you can overcome the wicked, especially your enemies, is with the Lord on your side as an ally. You have to let the Lord be Lord and let the Lord fight your battles. That's why the Bible says the battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. But don't forget the Bible also says that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Yeah, your enemy might talk about it. They might even be about it. But in the end, no matter what they do, it will not prosper if you let the Lord be Lord. No tit for tat, let the Lord be Lord. Well, let's go a little further down in the text because the text gives us even more reasons and benefits of having the Lord as an ally. Verse 5 says, For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up up on a rock. Well, let me say it again. He shall set me up upon a rock and now shall shall mine head be lifted above mine enemies round about me i don't know about you but that's good news because the lord he will either hide me from mine enemies in a secret place or he will set me up on a rock so i can see above mine enemies and and i'm like any, any way you bless me lord i'll be satisfied so i like both of these options but i want to talk about and say something about this second one, that the Lord will set you up upon a rock. Listen here, here's an illustration. Back in the Bible days, when men first began to battle and war against one another, the battles would be out in the open. They would uh, be face to face. And, and to gain an advantage, there was one thing that an opponent could do to help his cause. They would find a nearby rock structure that was high enough to look over and down on their enemy. And so now that they can see the enemy, they can see the numbers, the weaponry, the strategies, the formations, and things like that, and have a, their own strategies against the enemies now because they were able to have their head above the enemies. I like that. That's a good illustration, right? But I believe there is a better way to help us understand what the Lord is saying here. Now, now, now go with me. I, I had to swim out in the deep end to get this one, y'all. So listen to this. As a teenager... I, I grew up spending a lot of time in the water at the lake with my dad on his boat. Uh, we water skied and, yeah, I skied, I water skied. <laughs> Y'all say, he is lying. <laughs> I water skied. It wasn't many of us as water skiing, but I water skied. Yeah, we, we did the tubing and anything else that you would do in the water, right? Uh, but I remember one day in particular, one time I was swimming around, floating around, and I, I was just going about my little merry way, and before I looked up, I had swam way too far out in the deep. Way out in the deep. So I stopped, and I turned around, and I started trying to get back to safety. Y'all, I'm, I'm looking, there's a long way. I'm here, the boat and daddy's way over there. I'm, I'm trying to get back. But now all of a sudden, the wind and the waves are fighting against me. So I'm, I'm swimming, but I ain't making a whole lot of progress. I'm doing all my due diligence, but I ain't making no progress. Now I'm getting tired. Still fighting, still determined, but I'm even getting more tired. And all of a sudden, I go down, uh, 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 gulp some lake water. Uh-oh, I'm in trouble now, now it's time to panic. 
So I'm just doing dog paddling, floating, anything I can do to get back to safety. But again, the winds and the waves were working against me, and now I'm also tired. But out of nowhere, there was a large rock formation underneath the water. And just enough for me to feel it and to get on top of it to where my head was above the water. Come on, come on, y'all. My head was now above the water, and now I could see clearly there's the boat, there's daddy, there's the shore, there's safety. So I'm catching my breath. I'm catching my breath. I'm catching my breath. I'm catching my breath. I'm getting my courage up. I'm getting my strategy. I'm like, okay, this is A, this is B, straight line, I can make it. <clears throat> Second breath, third breath, let's get it, let's go. We swimming, we swimming, we swimming, and in the end, yeah, I made it, I made it. Oh, y'all, y'all, oh, y'all didn't think I made it? <laughs> y'all thought I was going to try to make it? <laughs> I made it, Jesus. But this is the reason why I shared that, and this is it. This is what's going to bless you. This is what's going to shout you. This is what's going to keep you on the job. Sometimes <clears throat> when the Lord sets you up on a rock and your head is above your enemies and your situation, your body is still in the water. Who y'all don't know when to shout. Your head <clears throat> is above. You can see above, you're treading water. I'm okay, I'm catching my breath, but I'm still in the situation. It's like that on your job. They hating on you, they talking about you, they lying on you, they doing everything, but because I let the Lord be Lord, now my head is above. Now I know that in due season, he is gonna deliver me from my haters and from this situation. So what you got to do is keep looking up. Keep looking to the hills from whence cometh my help. Because my help comes from the Lord. If you keep your head up, Tupac says keep your head up. Things are going to get easier. Yeah. So the last thing, the voice trying to go already. I was trying to slow it down, y'all. We're going to push through this. Last thing I want to share with you today is that the Lord is my answer. I said, the Lord is my all in all. The Lord is my ally. And now the Lord is my answer. Those final verses, 11 through 14, said, Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted. Unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. This this year, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. There's your answer right there. The Lord is my answer. That's your answer. Wait on the Lord. Wait on it. Wait on the Lord. For every test in your life that's tempting you to turn and go in the wrong direction, wait and let the Lord be Lord. For every trial in your life that's trying to take you out, wait and let the Lord be Lord. For every problem in your life that's putting pressure on you, wait and let the Lord be Lord. For every person that's pushing you to act out of character, wait and let the Lord be Lord. I know how it is. When you find yourself dealing with pain, dealing with problems and people, it's a natural thing to to want to protect yourself and and, and fix whatever's coming against you. That's called self-preservation. And in theory, there's nothing wrong with self-preservation. And I did say in theory, because in theory, the goal is to preserve yourself. But here's the reality of self-preservation. You really can't preserve yourself. You don't believe me? In other words, since you can't save yourself, since you can't heal yourself, 
since you can't deliver yourself, since you can't stop the enemies and your haters from rising up against you, then you need to wait on the Lord. Now, again, the Lord, the Lord, he knows what you need even before you leave it. The Bible says, and it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. Yeah. We just have to learn to wait and let the Lord be Lord. I was kind of humming a little tune this morning, got in my spirit, one in a bottom. I wish I could sing. She wrote the song, I don't mind waiting. Sylvia, I heard you can sing a little bit. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on the Lord. If you know that then, and you believe that, then wait. Learn how to wait and let the Lord be Lord. So the next time that that instinct to preserve self kicks in, stop, wait, and let the Lord be Lord. Because in Proverbs chapter 3 it says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. And in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. So if you know who he is, then let, it, let him be him. So if the Lord, I'm closing right now, if the Lord is Jehovah, Elohim, the Lord my creator, let the Lord be Lord. If the Lord is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord my provider, then let the Lord be Lord and make a way for you. If the Lord is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord my healer, then stop worrying and stop complaining and let the Lord heal your body at his own twenty time. If the Lord is Jehovah Nisi, the Lord my banner, then let the Lord stand up and represent you. If the Lord is Jehovah Mekadesh, the Lord who sanctifies, then let the Lord be Lord. If the Lord is Jehovah Sikanu, the Lord my righteousness, then let the Lord be Lord. If the Lord is Jehovah Shama, the Lord is near, then just let the Lord be Lord. And if the Lord is Jehovah Shalom, the Lord my peace, then stand still and let the Lord be Lord. And I don't know about you, but I'm just like David. I know now that the Lord is my light and my salvation. I know the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I know the Lord is my shelter in the time of storm. I know the Lord is my strength. My voice is struggling right now, but he'll help me through it. The Lord is my rock and my fortress. The Lord is my portion. The Lord is my peace. The Lord is my protection. The Lord is my keeper. The Lord is my God. The Lord is my glory. The Lord, he is my all in all. Just let the Lord be Lord over your life. Come on, preacher. God bless you. Let the Lord be Lord. Let the Lord be the Lord of your life. Reverend Davis, we thank you for the word of God through the man of God that has instructed us today to allow God to be God over our lives. We open the doors of the Combo First Missionary Baptist Church to those who have not received God as their Lord. The Lord through Reverend Davis has instructed us to allow God to be the God of our lives. Let God be God, and you stop trying to be your own little God. You stop trying to fix every little thing that's going on in your life because God allowed those things to come in your life. So allow God to correct those things, to fix those things, so that you may have an understanding of who God is and how God can carry you through the things of life that you're going through. Let the Lord be the Lord of your life. He's given us salvation. We've received him, but yet I'm on the job. I'm fighting my enemies. I'm arguing with my foes. Let the Lord be Lord. Let him hold you up. Let him lift your head above your enemies. When you allow your life to line up with God's will, then God will take care of the things that you're going through in life. You spoke to me today, preacher. You told me, let God fight your battles. You don't have to pick up the sword. Let God fix things in your life. Rem, I heard you today. Let the light shine in me that darkness has to flee. 
So when somebody comes at you, you don't have to go at them. Let your light so shine that they can't get to you for the light of Christ that's in you. I heard you, preacher. When God allows you to rise up above your enemies that you can see what they're planning for you, let God lift you. Let the Lord be Lord. When you think you can't make it through, I heard you, preacher. Wait. I say wait on the Lord, and he will carry you through. What we got to do today is let the Lord be Lord. Thank you, preacher. When we allow the Lord to be Lord, then the things of the world that the world would have us to do, I won't do. Because I'm going to let the Lord be the Lord. I'm going to let his will work through me. I heard you, preacher. I'm going to let the Lord be Lord in my life. So, if you didn't hear what Reverend David said, not my will, but thine will be done today. So, Lord, I'm going to let you be Lord. Right now, I'm wrestling with a situation in my life. So, Lord, I'm going to let you be Lord. So, Lord, you're telling me, rise up, walk down, and meet me. Let the Lord be Lord. Lord, I know who you are. I receive you, but I'm struggling then let me be Lord, arise, and get it right with me today. Step out and have faith in me today that I will be your provider, I will be your protector, I will be whatever you need me to be when you need it to be, be done. Let the Lord be the Lord of your life today. Brothers and sisters, I don't know about you, but I believe there's someone in the house today that needs to acknowledge that, Lord, I need you in my life right now. Lord, I'm low, I'm low down, but I need you in my life right now. Let the Lord be Lord of your life today. Won't you step out on faith and receive Jesus Christ? Come back to the Lord today. Won't you come today? He's tenderly calling. He's tenderly calling you back. All you have to do is answer. Step out on faith and let the Lord be Lord. Most gracious Father God, we thank you for the word today. We thank you for the messenger that provided the word for us today. Father God, we know that you are still yet on the throne. And though that this world is wild, it's wicked, and it's dark, Lord, that you still have those that have the light of Christ within them, Lord. And Father God, you have given us a light, and all we have to do is let our light so shine that the darkness has to flee. Father God, we know that you're well able to equip us with everything that we need to make it through this world. So right now, Lord, we're praying that you will allow us to have the strength to let thine will be done in our lives, Lord. We're praying right now, Lord, that we would stand up and acknowledge you in this world, Lord. Father God, we know that you're looking for us, Lord. We know that you know who we are, Lord. Lord, we're just asking that we would rise up and stand before this world and let them know that Jesus Christ still yet lives because we know that he lived, he died, and you raised him on the third day with all power in heaven and earth. So, Father God, we just need to tell this world that I am a believer. I am a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let the Lord be the Lord of your life. Father God, we pray right now if there's someone that's struggling with an addiction, Lord, we pray right now if there's someone that's struggling with a medical condition, Lord, we pray right now if there's someone struggling with a financial condition, decision, Lord, that you allow them to let you be their Lord of their life, that they would seek you and not seek the things of this world, that they would come unto you and not come unto the world, that they would turn their life over right now and give it back to Jesus Christ. Father God, we pray right now that they would come today. But then, Father, we know that the flesh is always present. So we pray, Lord, that they would take the words that they heard today that they will allow that word to marinate in their spirit, 
and that they will allow you to come into their spirit, that they will have a testimony on how they allowed the Lord to be the Lord of their life. This is our prayer, Lord, in the strong, precious, prestigious, and powerful name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. We did not have one today, but there's plenty good room. So, I don't know about you. I can't speak for you, but I'm going to let the Lord be the Lord. Amen. What a wonderful word we had from the Reverend Kevin Davis today. And we know we're going to let the Lord be the Lord of our lives. Whoa, what a powerful word today. What a powerful word today. Kevin has said, uh, go ahead and do the benediction as he regathers himself. I'm praying and I'm understanding that the Lord will work through Reverend Davis because the Lord has given Reverend Davis so much to share with us. And I'm going to keep listening. The Lord, his voice gets, the more my ear leans toward him. I'm going to keep hustling to listen to what the Lord is saying through him. And I encourage you guys to be listening for what God has to say through our preacher, Reverend Davis. We thank our pastor for having the confidence in us to go on vacation, to allow us to conduct the services. We thank you guys for your participation, for your reception of us. We're just growing. We're growing, and we may not be like daddy, but we're like daddy in our own special way. So accept us for who we are because God created us to be who we are. So we're thankful to the congregation for allowing us to share with you what God has spoken to us through our spirit. It's so wonderful to see the faces of you guys. Amen? So with no other words, we're standing to be dismissed. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rule, rest, and abide with us from this time to the next time that we gather. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come by and shake Reverend Davis's hand. Okay. Oh, uh, Academy 4. Don't forget about Academy 4 on the way out. Amen.